In this tutorial, we're going to look at creating an animated scatter chart using Python and more specifically the Plotly library within Python. So here uh, we've got some data that I've imported in through Pandas, obviously the, the gold standard sort of data analysis library uh, for Python. And then from there, we just go and establish the scatter chart, adjust some conditions and constraints, and then we're left with this uh, visualization that we can animate in under or around about 30 lines of code. So we've got the life expectancy, the GDP by country, and uh, if we hover over, we get some nice figures. We've got the status if it's developed or developing as we segregated in our legend with a color. So that's another uh, way of insightful um, element of our data visualization, the GDP and the life expectancy. So if I click play, you'll see that played from within the, the mid date range that we have. If we click again, we'll restart. And this will show how things change over the year. Helpful to see the animation, obviously, in other use cases, if we had data by day, so let's say something like maybe COVID cases by day, it'd be really beneficial uh, to view that at a slower pace. Uh, we can view the data here. We would expect developed countries to have a slightly higher life expectancy in GDP at minimum. We can also go ahead with this picker here, this date picker. We don't have to animate it fully. Uh, we can drag along and see our results. So I'm going to go through how you can build this in your chosen notebook, IDE. Uh, next up, we'll look at some of the, the required documentation or dependencies. And then we'll actually go ahead and build out the code using Python. In order to create our animated scatter chart in Python, we're going to use the Plotly uh, library. And we're more specifically going to use the Plotly Express module, as we can see here, usually imported as PX. So this is sort of, Plotly Express covers a lot of the more high level, uh, more standard Plotly visuals. And this is exactly what we're going to use. There's not too much that we actually need to know from here. It follows a lot of the same formatting as most data visualization within Python. Um, but some important highlights, I guess, we can see uh, in terms of actually building things with Plotly, uh, it's quite, um, there's not much code required. Uh, the, the actual scatter that we're going to create will be less than 30 or around about 30 lines of code. Um, to look at the current functions or charts that we can create with Plotly Express, we've got basics, parts of a whole, things like Pi, Sunburst. You can see scatters listed as basic, but we're actually going to animate this, so it's really nice functionality. If you've looked at actually animating things in uh, Power BI, quite often there can be extra steps or custom visualizations to be taken. This is a really nice solution we'll look at just using within our sort of code notebook. That could be, uh, I'll use Google Colab, it could be something like Jupyter Notebooks or, or however you want to visualize that. Um, Again, there's there's not much else that we should probably cover from the initial documentation. Here's just some examples. So we've got the iris data. It's important to note in Plotly, they actually have a number of data sets built in within the context of sort of pandas data frames. So one of those is the iris data that's very popular for machine learning and training models and visualizing data. Um, sort of between iris flowers the, the sepal and the petals and the width and length and so on so that's a scatter matrix here uh, in terms of the gallery we've got some other objects we can see our sort of box and whisker charts here um again more of a statistical approach doesn't have to be though uh, this bar chart's interesting because this can also be animated so you could almost show it across years if you wanted to do that as well um and lastly, if I was to showcase almost what we'll be doing, but we've got a lot of different customizations, this is the um, scatter chart and we're actually going to build an animated version. You can see here, read more about animations and what they've done here. They've got the life expectancy and they're looking at a sort of um, a, a causal link here, uh, GDP per capita um, and through here, 
Uh, I believe they adjust the size of the bubble based on the population. And we can get a lot of insights, look at sort of correlation here between the life expectancy, the GDP, uh, and the size of the population. So we're going to be using a different data set. We're going to be using uh, a custom data set, the life expectancy data set from Kaggle. Um, and we're going to work off that. Now, as I said, there is actually several inbuilt data packages for, for data sampling within Plotly Express. It may just be uh, worth sharing. One of these is car share data, uh, election data. But what I would actually point you towards here, we've got plotlyexpress.data.gapminder. This is a uh, good sample data, and that was what was actually used uh, within the last example we looked at with the scatter chart uh, representing a country in a given year. We've got the life expectancy, the population, GDP, um, not that many columns, but really enough to sample out uh, the visualizations. We've also got iris there uh, with the standard columns. So it's definitely worth looking into if you want to play around with this data visual visualization library in Python uh, with some sample data. But we're going to move ahead now and actually look at uh, starting to visualize and animate our data visualizations using Python. So now we're at the bulk of the tutorial. We're going to look at how we actually build out um, this with a sort of minimal amount of lines of code generally. Um, it's important to note I'm using Google Colab, which you can access at colab.research.google.com. And it, it's almost similar to Jupyter Notebooks, but what's really beneficial, if you've not used uh, sort of notebooks too much, very easy and basic to set up. Uh, there's not a lot of installation that's done within the browser. Um, I haven't tried, uh, typically with these sorts of things where we're uh, performing multiple sequential steps and actually visualizing data, I like to do it in a notebook. I haven't done this in my full-blown IDEs, Atom, PyCharm, Visual Studio Code. So I'd suggest Google Colab's a good place to start if you if you don't know where you want to, to sort of work with this. One thing to note with Google Colab, we need to um, install whatever package we're going to use if we haven't already within Google Colab. So a good chance you may not have installed Plotly. So like we would in the CMD or Terminal, we will just say pip install Plotly and we'll run this cell. It'll just take a second to connect, initialize, uh, and then it'll likely say that we've already satisfied this uh, required install. Uh, but it may not um, for you, so it's important to go over this step. So it's going to go ahead and requirement already satisfied, so that's absolutely fine. X that, and I'll go into the next line. You may also need to ins pip install pandas here if you haven't already. Uh, I have. So next we're going to import our packages. So we're going to import Plotly. We'll also import pandas because we'll need that to get our specific data there and we will import plotly.express as px plotly express essentially being um just a way that we can use a lot of the standard high level visuals from plotly and we'll just alias that as px pandas as pd so that they're easier to reference later on I'll run that cell. One thing about using things like notebooks or Google Colab, you want to run the cell sequentially just to get everything configured, at least initially. And there we go. And now we can actually import our data. So I actually got this life expectancy data from Kaggle. Um, I haven't actually done anything in terms of modifying it. I've just uh, saved it under a different name potentially. So just say import Kaggle life expectancy uh, data set. We'll take that into a pandas data frame. Of course, um, just a standard way for visualizing um, series or data frames, sort of columns or full blown tables. Um, and we'll say and sort by year. And I'm going to sort by year because this is going to allow us to, it's the simplest way to actually go ahead and view uh, that animated slider in the correct order. I found that if I didn't do that and sort by year, uh, it was sort of appearing in descending order, so the the nearest date year to where we currently are, uh, it was showing first, 
where we wanted to start from the furthest year away and navigate in an ascending order up to say from 2000 to 2015 instead of 2015 to 2000. So the first thing I'll do, I'll actually just specify the name of a new data frame. Quite often you'll see pandas data frames just listed as DF. Um, however, it's not a good habit to be in if you're actually working um, on projects that aren't just your, your own personal projects. If you're working professionally, you want to be really specific with how you name things. It's one way to make things more readable and easy to follow, uh, either amongst teams or when you revisit the code months later. So I'd suggest you, as a good habit, to make uh, your variable names very um, very consistent and specific. So I will say, I'll just call this life expectancy DF. I use Pascal case to name things. So the capital of each letter, of each word, each word essentially is separated by a capital letter and DF I'll just do as capitals as well because it's an abbreviation. So say the function that we want is pd.read underscore CSV. Essentially we want to read a CSV file and convert it to a pandas data frame. And you just need to reference your file. If it's in the same working directory, you don't have to specify the whole raw string. If this is saved in the same folder or what we call directory as your Python script, you can just specify the name of this. So mine is just called life expectancy data.csv. So when we run that, everything is working as expected that is now converted into a data frame um, so we could print this data frame just to correct that, just to check that everything's okay uh, we will get the uh, intellisense will populate the name of that data frame and we can print it and we can see what we're working with the the columns the column structure and the row structure we get a country a year uh, this specific year, because obviously we want to visualize this through years, we need multiple years, whether it's a developing or developed country, uh, the life expectancy, and then also, you know, the sort of metrics they've defined that contribute towards that potentially. Adult mortality, infant deaths, alcohol, percentage expenditure, hep B, measles, polio, again, expenditure, diphtheria, HIV AIDS, GDP, population, the thinness, uh, of children essentially or young adults, uh, income composition and schooling. So there's a lot of columns here. But one thing I found was helpful, uh, as I previously alluded to, was to, again, we can update this data frame. We'll say life expectancy, DF. And what we actually want to do is sort the previous data frame. So we'll say, again, life expectancy df there dot sort underscore values and then we'll say year so we want to sort by year and we will say ascending is equal to uh, i won't use i'll just use capital t there ascending is equal to true so what we're saying here we can see what happens here if i go ahead and rerun this cell the structure will change because it's sorting by year. Now, we've just essentially taken this data frame, which is just this file read into a pandas data frame. And then we're saying, okay, remake this data frame variable. But what we want to do now is sort the values by the year in ascending order from the lowest year to the highest in terms of the highest being the closest to the current year we're in, and then print that. As I said, this is going to be important when we actually go ahead and build out our animated slider. So that's step one uh, in terms of actual our first code block. Now what we're going to do is just, I will add a comment again for good practice, and I will say set core scatter, uh, we'll say scatter chart, Axes, so plural of axis and constraints. So what we're going to do now, we'll just name this fig as is the normal standard for figure. And we will say px dot scatter. And this is just the uh, Kotlin express and scatter is just a standard argument to start 
uh, the standard function to start specifying arguments or parameters here um, to actually build out our visualization. So let me show you what that means. So the first thing I need to do is reference the data frame. So that's life expectancy data frame column. Now I need to specify my X axis. So what I want along the X or horizontal axis will be the GDP. I want to visualize that. And my Y axis, I will set equal to life expectancy. Now what you'll notice here is there will be a bit of strange uh, naming conventions. That's because I didn't actually format this file. I downloaded it from Kaggle. Um, you can also find this as well if you were to type in life expectancy. You'll be able to find the same data set uh, on Kaggle.com. But I didn't actually cleanse this. So that space is just because I'm just mirroring the way that it's presented in the data source. In an ideal world, this would be cleansed and it would be you know, very tight and there wouldn't be random spaces dotted about. I need to then specify my animation frame, uh, essentially what I'm going to animate by. So that will be the year. That's fine. I will specify an animation group. And that will be equal to country. And then what I need to do is have a color. Now I'm going to base my color on the status. So this is essentially saying, right, well, as a default, just give us two colors, uh, one for that develop status and one for that developing. And that's really handy because it can help us almost confirm what we'd expect in that developing country should uh, have a higher life expectancy uh, based on certain factors like GDP um, because uh, um, and what that allows us to do is see where the developed countries actually fall as outliers and we can further analyze that. So we will say hover name is equal to country. So the, the main name when we hover over uh, what you may know as a tooltip when we hover over the, uh, the scatter essential individual bubble that will be the the name apologies for that uh, blurb passing through there we will set log x equal to true spell that correctly it's equal to true and we'll go down and specify our next argument here which will be the maximum size so we'll just set that equal to 55 and you can i won't go break into every element here I'll break into the important ones but you can research this through the pretty comprehensive comprehensive plotly documentation uh, range x will be equal to set this as 100 and then we will say 100,000. And then range Y will be, obviously we're going to be specifying the life expectancy. We'll, so we'll take that between 25 and say 99. There. So we've got our figure here. And what we've done, this is the key elements that we'll be displaying. We'll be using the life expectancy data frame to pull these other elements in because they're essentially column values. So x-axis along the horizontal line, GDP, y-axis life expectancy, animation frame year, animation group country, the color. So we're going to break this into two colors, the status, just default colors, hover name country, uh, and again, some of the constraints here. So when we do that and click play, we get this completion so that looks good to me what we could actually do here is just type fig dot show and that would be how we actually get a view on what's being created we're going to go above and beyond but if we just showed everything like this we get all the elements we want life expectancy gdp the status broken down by color uh, we can play the animation, so that's good. 
Uh, however, the, the colour isn't great and it's quite jarring. Uh, there's no title. Uh, there's no some of the other default formatting values set. So I'm going to show how we can do that now. So we will remove the fig.show. We will just establish this as sort of the base for our actual scatter chart constraints, rules, uh, columns, what we're basing everything on. And now what I'll say is in this code block, this last code block I'll add, we are setting the additional uh, visual properties. So what we will do here is we will specify the update layout function here, fig, because that's what we have the variable named as fig.update layout. And then within here, we'll give it a title. So in my case, I will just say, I like to have a title as a question just to make it even easier for end users to figure out what we're trying to do here. Why, how does GDP, we'll say, impact life expectancy? There we go. Uh, the next element we'll do font family. So I like, especially in personal sorts of projects like these to have Courier New, which is almost akin to um, Monospace. It's got that sort of futuristic writing, let's say. Uh, Courier New will say the font color needs to be white because we're actually going to blend in the background uh, with our dark mode. So we'll say font color is equal to white. And then we'll say the plot. Uh, background color and then I'll say is equal to uh, we'll give the RGBA values so RGBA and we'll specify zero because we're going for transparent here so zero zero and then I'm just going to slightly adjust the alpha or the full transparency here zero zero one five we close the quotation marks and then what we're going to do here is take paper just the other element to make things transparent paper bg color is equal to again i will get rid of that uh, snip there and we will say rgba again same values zero 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 point one five and that close the quotation marks there and that will do for now. So let's look at how that differentiates things. We'll say fig dot show. Show the figure here, the chart. What happens now is things are starting to look better. Uh, we've got the title. We've got white font. It's present as well. And some of the hovering status, the year, the animation. But what's now frustrating is the grid lines. They're very overwhelming. So what I will do here is I will just say fig dot update underscore x axis. And I will set that equal to, well not equal to, I'll just use my parenthesis and I'll say show grid is equal to to false and then I will also do this with the y-axis so update to copy paste control C control V so I've got the x-axis and y-axis as showing a false grid now if I click play Great, starting to look a lot better. I get rid of that axis lines. And then finally, the last thing I'll do is increase the size of the bubbles because they're quite hard to see. Now it's worth noting that you could conditionally set the size within here, within the PX scatter, just with size and you can set equal to a column. So maybe you might want to set it equal to the population of the country, maybe the life expectancy itself, some other metric. In this particular data, I didn't see one that was particularly useful. So I'm just going to set a size that's consistent across all bubbles, uh, which is, is helpful in the sense just for general visibility. So we want update traces here. And 
marker here we'll just set equal to picked and then just size is equal to i found that 13 was was a good size here so again now i get a nicer bubble size and everything is complete so now what i can do i've got my title my nice white font nice hover effect uh, my legend looks good everything's sort of blended into the color again i can play my animation it looks really good and it was really simple to do this um, we just had to go through core elements here we can navigate see certain elements for example i could see well why is bulgaria a developed country falling you know uh, quite behind a lot of developing countries despite the gdp uh, being almost above average uh, the life expectancy is certainly not too great again you could see austria has quite a small gdp but life expectancy is good another outlier and so on whereas we have luxembourg with the highest gdp by far but certainly not the highest life expectancy and it is a developed country but it's falling below some of the others and we could look to dissect things that way so there were a few elements here ensure that you have plotly installed and pandas import them in whatever data you choose bring it into a data frame that's probably the easiest way to do it sort it if you need to as we saw this animation bar if we want it to flow a certain way uh, which you most likely will set up the the main um arguments within the, the px.scatter function for a scatter chart and then we modify some of the visual properties uh, this is important here fig to update x axis and y if you want to get rid of those grid lines uh, and a lot of the other things you can just find through scrolling through the documentation but this is how to easily get a python data visualization from here with plotly you can actually look into dash to easily make your own analytical web apps with uh, a lot of these core visualizations uh, and look at how you can can host your own sort of uh, interactive online dashboards so if you like the content please feel free to like comment subscribe and share and if you have something else you want me to cover in you know python sql power bi tableau azure data factor any data space uh, topic please feel free to leave a comment and, and i'll look at getting around to that thank you